said he ran with the juice, but the juice ain't the one. It belongs to a sauce and it's done. Eye catching, the sweetest of ones. Make it taste bud and blossom like seeds that come with that cold influence. I'm all inclusive, sick to the tissue, blood, bone, and juices. They don't know what I'm holding is sacred. No, no. Living what I drip through with a little shampoo. Didn't come cheap for my valley to go and be wasted on one not deserving us. And they see they move, but they sleep in paralysis. Tether, empty jar, suki sauceless stepper. I'd rather move in endeavor, clever. Switch to my grind like a lever. But them and them man, they're sauceless. They're a suki, so so sauceless. Niagara, it fools, but I stand on top. Eternal, it pulls. The sauce never stops. I see the dough finalized with some acid on top. They see that I need the stop, that I'm doing too much, and that I need the change. You do the math to know that. We're not the same Cause the talents in the trip Then make it make sense How can I trip it? The trip that I carry is drowning Then come cheat for my valley to go And be wasted on one Not deserving the same They say they move But they sleep And paralysis ever Empty jars To keep sauceless stepper I'd rather move in endeavor Clever Switch to my grind like a lever But Them and them man they're sauceless They're a suki so so sauceless A woman's best makeup is a smile Like a mask It can cover up the face of her trials But the face of her pain will soon fade away when royalty drip is hydrating the game you see i'm dope without the weed the man they want the smoke morning gets in smoke like a candle in the church's eye and plant my garden boot i put them from the root make a mission to wish them what a they can really do never had a full fun so can you call him a whole man no meat to his feelings so i fooled him a whole plan my dogs are never sleeping always watching always peeping gomo gomo region it's jiggy here scheming flame spicy pepper moving salty as he dipped in my pinky take a sip but this sauce is adopted man fully rubbed it the one he sees fully Molded by the essence from the core cool I was sculpted Hey, they see they move but they sleep in paralysis Tether, an empty jar, suki sauceless stepper I'd rather move in endeavor, clever Switch to my grind like a lever But, them and them and they're sauceless They're a suki, suce a sauceless Restricted, he's awaiting confinement The devil's moving mad and always got an assignment Faith, James, two from one, better be bad. Couldn't work, swap, they watch. Full like David Christ takes the hassle off, nah, man. On the south side, chin on the black side, lifestyle, Christ life, bad and legit. All I've been through, never forget. Gotta give thanks when I reminisce. On the south side, chin on the black side, lifestyle, Christ life, bad and legit. All I've been through, never forget. Gotta give thanks when I reminisce. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new, I invite you to subscribe to our channel, Imprint TV. 
You can also find us on Anchor Podcasts. Please enjoy the rest of the service. God bless.
Cause the great I am speaks over me. Hallelujah. Speaks over me. I am what I am. Cause the great I am us. speaks over me. Oh Lord, speaks over me. I am what I am. Cause the great I am. Over me. I am, I am, I am, I am what I am, cause the great I am speaks over me. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus.
to bless you to the middle of the trial to the middle of the storm I'll still bless you and I'll still bless you and I'll still bless you I'll still bless you
We believe the Christian life is a partnership between God and the Christian family, the church. God is the source of all things, including our money, and we give back to him in the form of tithes and offerings. This enables the church to undertake the work to which God has called us, extending the kingdom and giving to his name. You can give via bank transfer or at weareimprint.org slash give. It's Megan here. I hope you're having an amazing Sunday. So myself, along with the Imprint Outreach team, have been working on a couple of things that we just want to mention to you. So the first thing is our online how-to evangelism sessions. So they are essentially what it says, how to do evangelism, the importance of it. So the first one we're having is on the 9th of October, 9th of October, with Pastor Wale. So he's going to be looking at the importance of knowing Jesus and the importance of intimacy with him as well, which is essential for when we go to approach people about Jesus and talk to them, we need to be sensitive and aware of how God may want to speak to that person. So he's going to be looking at that on the 9th of October. It'll be great to have you there. So please sign up through weareimprint.org forward slash outreach. And the second thing was mentioned last week, which is our online alpha course, which we're really excited about. So that's gonna start on the 20, 22nd of October. And it's basically a 11 week course. So if you have non-Christian friends that may have questions about Jesus or about Christianity, it's a really good place for them to come because it's safe, it's open, they can ask any questions they want without any judgment. So we're going to be watching a video and then discussing it in small groups afterwards. So that's the way it will work. So if you yourself want to come as well, if you have questions about God, you may be new to faith, um, it's open to anybody. So please sign up if you're interested as well. Uh, we'd encourage you, if you are going to bring a friend, if you can come as well with them, that would be great. But if not, that's fine. But as Pastor Wally asked last week, he asked, who are you going to invite? So I ask you again, who are you going to invite? Who was the person last week that came to mind that you didn't invite for some reason? And who's coming to mind now? And if there was some reason why you didn't approach them, I, I pray that you will have the boldness and the courage to invite that person because we are praying that we will see transformation in people's lives through this Alpha Course, through God, through God's power. So your obedience, your the result of that, you could see your friends coming to Christ essentially. So how amazing would that be? So I really encourage you to, to invite your friends along. So if you want to sign up, the link is weareimprint.org forward slash alpha. So please sign up. So now we're just going to look at one more video about Alpha so you can get a real feel for it. And again, if you want to sign up, amazing. And we hope to see you there. We've all got questions. Why am I here? What's the point? What difference does my life make? Thank you. Why are the things that are so bad for us taste so good? Hey, sir, do you pray? I don't have an answer for that. Why can I live life to the full? What can I really trust? What's my purpose? What do you think happens when you die? You're going straight to the gulags. Does anyone hear my prayer? What's for dinner? What will make me happy? Why don't good things last forever? What is God really like? Does anyone else even ask themselves these questions? Hey everyone, I've got an amazing Alpha Online group here. Hi. 
better place to ask life's big questions. Ask Alpha. Hey family, I am so excited that we just announced that we are starting Alpha Online. I absolutely love Alpha and I have just seen how over the last few years, God has really transformed so many people's lives through Alpha. So if you are interested in attending an Alpha Online session or perhaps know someone who is interested, then I just want to urge you and petition you to sign up at weareimprint.org forward slash alpha and also in other good news we are opening up our building next week and boy it has been a long time it's been a long time since i've seen some of your faces and i'm so excited that i get to see some of your faces next week but however i do just want to acknowledge that i know for some of you guys perhaps you weren't able to get a ticket on time or perhaps you are just not yet comfortable and being in a mass gathering. And um, I just want to say that we will still be streaming our service live on Sunday and you can still join us online. And lastly, um, over the last six months, has it been six months of lockdown? Yeah, over the last six months, we have, um, we've had a phenomenal team working behind the scenes to actually produce and to get these online services together who have been doing every graphic, who have been doing the lyrics on the worship and the videography and so much more. And I just wanna thank the Imprint Creative team for the amazing work that you guys have done over the last, yeah, literally six months. You guys, you guys have been such a blessing to us. So I just quickly wanna give these guys a shout out. I wanna say a big thank you to Burns, Izzy, Millie, Sam, Helen, Samuel, and Bernita. God bless you guys. We really appreciate everything you've done for us. So yeah, so like I said last week, we are starting a new series called Impact, and I just wanna, I just want us to dive in immediately. So let's go to Matthew chapter seven, verse one to six. So it says, refuse to be, refuse to be a critic full of bias towards others and judgment will not be passed on you for you'll be judged by the same standard that you use to judge others the measurements you use on them will be used on you why would you focus on the flaw in someone else's life and yet fail to notice the glaring flaws on your own how can you say to your friend, let me show you where you're wrong when, you, you, when, when you're guilty of even more? You're being hypocritical, a hypocrite. First acknowledge your blind spots and deal with them and then you will be capable of dealing with the blind spots of your friend. So many of us actually know this reading. You know, it is the same reading where in another translation Jesus says, how can you say to a brother, let me take the speck out of your own eye when there's a plank in your own eye? You know, I just find um, Jesus was, um, I just love his humor. He says, how can, you, how can you say to a brother, can I take a speck out of your own eye when there's a, like a giant plank in your own eye? So essentially Jesus is saying that Sometimes we can be so quick to point out a tiny flaw, habit or sin in someone else's life, but perhaps we're not as quick to address the obvious vices and issues in our own hearts and lifestyles. And Jesus actually infers that this type of behavior is ludicrous. You know, he says in Luke chapter six, verse 39, he says, can one person lead another won't they both fall into a ditch? So Jesus is saying that it is illogical for someone who has a fault or maybe and even the same fault to basically re reprimand someone else um, who has that fault as well. 
But however, I'd just like to clarify that Jesus is not saying that calling other people into account is a bad thing. Actually, he, he says it's a good thing. But as verse 5 of Matthew chapter 7 suggests, he's saying that you're only qualified and capable to do so when you first of all have dealt with your own fault. So why am I saying this? Why am I um, talking about this particular um, extract from Matthew? Because I believe that when it comes to making an impact, to seeing families, friendship groups, neighbourhoods, offices, campuses, cities transformed, culture renewed and structures reformed, I believe that Jesus' approach is to first start with us. Like a missionary um, once said to me, he said, he said, a healthy believer produces good fruit. So there's times where God actually wants to work on our hearts when he wants to work on our character so we can also produce good fruit. A healthy believer produces good fruit. And I'm sure for many of us in our various contexts, we can all find different things that we can, we can all find different things in the world that we don't like or even things in our particular sphere, or perhaps in different, in people's personalities that we don't like. But how often do we use that same magnifying glass on our own hearts and examine our hearts and ask the Spirit of God and say, is there anything in my life, in my heart that I need to address? You know, I believe it's really easy to judge another person. It's easy to judge a person who's on the street, perhaps due to an excessive um, drug addiction, but not notice the addiction that you have to caffeine and Netflix. It's easy to judge a person in your course, in your office, for perhaps gossiping and always trying to find out the latest scoop. But it's not easy to notice the way you talk about other people's business from your church. You know, it's easy to judge a multi-billionaire that finds a way to tax invade and pay less like tax, but not notice the selfishness that you display to your own friends and family. Like I said, it's easy to judge other people. But honestly, if you really want to help reform culture in those areas, then I believe that you first have to, and I believe scripture's highlighting that you first have to address your own weaknesses. As cliche as it sounds, you must embody the change you want to see. Because you can only impart what you know and what you have lived out. If you cultivate generosity, then your life will encourage other people to live generously. If you cultivate honour, then your life will encourage others to be honourable. If you cultivate mercy, then your life will compel others to be merciful. And if you cultivate purity, then others will hunger to be pure in heart as well. And why do I believe this is true? I believe it's true because they can see your fruit. They can see the fruit of someone who lives generously, that someone who lives honourably, that someone who lives an honourable lifestyle. They can, see the, they can see the fruit of someone who lives, who lives out of um, mercy. And they can also see the fruit of someone who has a pure heart. Like Matthew chapter 5 verse 16 says, it says, Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And I have actually been in a situation like this. I remember a few years ago for a conference, I was asked to um, assist a really uh, popular and well-known pastor. And he is a phenomenal public speaker and has written some incredible books. But something I didn't realise until I actually spent some time with him is that he carried so much peace and rest. He was at rest with himself and he was at rest with God. And it got to the point where even being around him was so convicting because he stood rest and peace so much that it convicted me because at that time in my life, I was always grinding and I was always hustling and I, I was always busy. I was never still. I was never 
at rest. And I remember even there was a time where I was convicted for drinking coffee, not because of anything he said, um, but just because being around him, I could see how, and I love coffee by the way, but I could see how when I was around him that I was using coffee as a stimulant to get me through my day. But I could see in his life that he was using um, God. He would, yeah, he was using God to get him through his day. He would often retreat. He would often just go away to just spend time with God to, to re-energize himself and to um, encounter the peace of God all over again. And he's actually one of the main reasons. He's actually um, someone who encouraged me to have a Sabbath daily. And still to today, years later, I still have a Sabbath daily where I try to cut myself away from all the distractions um, in the world while well, I try and where I just spend time with God and where I just try to rest in him. And in a sense, I imitated this guy as he imitated Christ. And I did that because I saw the rest. I saw the clarity in mind, the self-insurance, the sensitivity to God and his people. And I became jealous for it because I wanted it to become my reality as well. And I have seen it become my reality where I also try to cultivate a lifestyle where I retreat and where I just say, okay, I'm going to spend time with God, where I'm just going to rest in him. So like I said before, God wants to start with us. Another way that we can see transformation in our world, another way that transformation starts with us is through prayer and repentance. In Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 4, it says, God says, if my people who are, who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will, and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. So this is a promise that God is given to Israel. He's saying that if his people humble themselves, seek his face, repent from their wrong ways, that he indeed will forgive their land and he indeed will forgive their sins and heal their land. And I believe that the same, I believe that the same is still true for us today, for everyone who calls God Abba Father, for everyone who calls upon his name. That if we pray, if we yield our desires to his word and will, if we turn from our sins and from living lives of self-centeredness, that the Lord will grant a heaven-sent revival and he will send healing and restoration to our land and to our local and even to our personal spheres. But it takes humility, it takes prayer, and it takes repentance. So if we can see, if we can see through scripture that transformation starts with us, that often transformation of a society, of, a, of, of culture um, started with believers, then how for ourselves, how can we actually steward that transformation? How can we receive transformation for ourselves? And I believe that we see this answer in Romans chapter 12. So let's turn there. It says, therefore, verse one, therefore I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. I'll read verse two again. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 
So Paul essentially is saying that how he's saying one way that we respond to God's mercy that he has shown us um, to God's um, grace in forgiving us for our sins is that we cultivate a lifestyle where we are willing to let anything go that does not please him and where we are willing to sacrifice our own selfish desires and ambitions to honor him and Paul when he says do not conform to the patterns of the world he is saying that rather than adjusting and conforming and becoming um, imitators of the ideals and opinions of the culture around you he's commissioned us to be in inwardly transformed by a complete reformation on how we think he's calling us to be inwardly transformed by a complete reformation on how we think so the question is how do we change how we think and i believe by two ways and honestly, I don't think they're uh, mutually exclusive, but I believe two, there's two ways on how we change how we think, the way we think. So the first way is by studying the word of God. And the second way is by spending time in God's presence. Like I said, I don't believe they're mutually exclusive, but I'd just like to give an example of studying the word of God, how it changes the way we think. So if we look at 2 Kings um, chapter, yeah, 2 Kings, I believe it's chapter 23, it gives an account of someone called King um, Josiah. And King Josiah didn't grow up with God's word, but he later on um, in his years, he discovered um, some of God's law. And when he did this, it brought so much conviction to him. And it did something that commentators call the Deuteronomic reform, where essentially he reformed um, his city. And um, yeah, he basically, yeah, he just, he just did a lot. So I'm going to read exactly what he did. So here are some examples of what he did. First of all, he removed pagan altars and temples. He got rid of the priest and performed worship. He, he got rid of the priest that performed worship to ritual. Sorry, he, he got rid of the priest that performed worship and rituals to idols. He destroyed the local brothels and the sleeping quarters that were inside the temple of the Lord. He smashed the sex and religion shrines that had been set up at the left side of the city. And he even demolished an iron furnace that was used for sacrificing children in the fire that people would often um, do to make a sacrifice to a god called Molech. And he did so much more. So essentially, he destroyed anything that he felt did not bring honour to God. And even, I'll just also like to give an example of spending time with God on how that changes how that changed someone else's perspective, someone that spent time in the presence of God. And we can see um, this with Paul himself, where Paul on the road to Damascus, where Paul on the road to Damascus um, encountered Jesus. Jesus speaks to him and says, why are you persecuting me? And after that encounter, Paul is transformed from a murderer to a missionary. So we can see in scripture that the word of God and the presence of God has the power to change the way we think. But if we are, but if we are being honest with ourselves, we are not intentional when it comes, we're not always intentional when it comes to reading and studying the word of God and spending time in God's presence. Perhaps it's due to our newfound devotion to TikTok or something like that. Or maybe if it's like me, um, to this new show called Cobra Kai, which whew, was phenomenal. And honestly, I watched too many episodes in a day, but there's mercy at the foot of the cross for me. Hallelujah. But perhaps it's because of things like that, where we give our time excessively to other things other than God. And because of this, you know, if we're being honest, our convictions have been compromised and our discernment is slowly being eroded. 
And that's why for some of us, we find it so hard to discern and to clearly um, see and sense what God is saying to us. And honestly, I don't think it's because God is not talking, but I think it's just because we are so distracted and our minds are so clouded with the paradigms that have that have basically um, the paradigms that have basically entered our minds and um, through entertainment and culture that are often contrary to the way God thinks. And I like to give this example. Um, for some of us that obviously have been using Zoom or maybe um, FaceTime for my Apple friends out there, Team Android. <laughs> but I know that many of us can, I'm sure that many of us can relate when we are speaking to someone and we are speaking to them and we're perhaps telling them about our day or perhaps um, sharing a story with them and they are nodding their head but if we're being honest they are not listening to a word we're saying they we can see them but they are not listening to us they are not present in the moment and that is very possible even with God where we can have God all around us where his spirit even dwells inside of us but we are not present and we are not attentive to what he is saying. So church, I would like to ask, what would your life really be like? What would your day look like if God was truly the focus? Because if God really became our focus, then I believe that your mind will be renewed and your whole being will be transformed. And like verse two says, you'll be able to discern clearly what God's perfect and good will is. You'll be able to hear how he wants to bring heaven on earth and transform unjust structures, on how he wants to challenge violence of every kind, pursue peace and reconciliation, and how you can partner. The thing is, church, that transformed people transform their families. They transform their friendship groups, they transform their offices, like I've said before. They transform their campuses, they transform their neighbourhood, and they transform their cities and beyond. And you know, this is not an unfamiliar concept that we have in society. We can see that even in most industries, when a company wants to diversify or go to the next level, they often employ a person who's not just limited to that particular context and who's not just limited to the practices um, within that company. They employ someone with an outsider perspective that can introduce new practices and new, ide and new ideas and bring their external experience into it. Essentially, someone in a worldly sense um, who has a transformed mind. And this approach, and for many um, industries and businesses, have led to the flourishing of their particular, um, yeah, of their particular industry and business. So I would just like to say, if we can see this concept even being used in, in industries, how much more can a believer who is renewed in mind, refined in character, non-anxious in posture, prophetic in sight, filled with faith, energised with joy, contribute to society. And that's my prayer for you. Hey guys, I hope you really, really enjoy today's service. It's such an honour and a privilege to, to share and connect with you guys on a Sunday. And if you're new, please let us know um, by signing up on our website or just putting a, a little comment um, or DMing our social media account. We would love to just connect with you and get to know you. Um, I just wanted to share a few encouragements and some prayers before we go back into a time of worship. Um, we just had a sense that there's some people that are watching this that um, have been feeling far away from God. They've been struggling to read their word or worship um, and it's just been feeling very heavy. Um, and it just you just feel quite condemned but i just wanted to just pray over you and declare 
that you know the Lord's voice is is is, is one of love. Um, he he is so kind. Um, he, he even says that his kindness is the thing that leads us to repentance. And I just wanted to encourage you to listen out for God's voice and and that 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 small still voice that is kind, that is good, that is filled with peace and love and joy and to go back to the fruits of the spirit and to just silence any other voice that does not sound like that because his fruit the fruits of the spirit that's the voice of our lord and our savior and our father so i just wanted to pray over you right now Um, i just pray for every other voice just to be silenced in jesus name and i just thank you lord that your voice is not condemning And I just thank you, Lord, that you are the one that gives us the desire to read our words. You are the one that gives us the desire to pray. You are the one that gives us a heart that burns for you and that will continue to burn for you again. We pray, Lord, for hearts that long for you. Remind us of our first love. But I thank you, Lord, that you do it in such a kind way. You you take us by the hand. And you lead us step by step. So we just thank you, Lord, for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, we also had a sense that um, God wanted to restore hope and he wanted to restore rest. Um, you may feel like you don't have much energy and you've just been going through a tough time, especially through this lockdown. Um, but we just saw a picture of people standing up again. Um, and their tongues being loosed to be able to declare over their circumstances again that um, God is giving you the grace to be able to pray over your circumstances and where you feel like you, you're struggling to get up and, um, and that your tongue feels like almost like tied up that people are coming around you and declaring over your circumstances so we just pray right now for that hope that hope to be able to declare where there's been uncertainty where it feels like a transitional season we just declare rest and we declare hope hope again hope hope in jesus name yeah and we just really encourage you as well where if you feel like you're a person where yeah i am someone that's that's still struggling to speak over my situations that I am, I, I want that hope again and, and it's just been a tough season. We really, really encourage you to, to speak to one of our prayer team or to reach out to a community or someone in your crews. And we would just, we want to surround you. We want to love you. We want to pray over you. And you're just so deeply loved. Um, yeah. And we just wanted to pray that the Lord is just redeeming your story. He's restoring you. And um, yeah, you're his masterpiece. So yeah, guys, um, I hope you enjoy worship and the rest of the service. Also, please reach out to our prayer team. Any prayer requests, big or small, we'd love to pray for you. It's 
your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out So oh. 
All right, guys, we've come to the end of our service. We have a virtual prayer team who would love to pray for you if you have any prayer requests. You can access them via the Zoom link below. If you are new to faith and would like to know more about Jesus or would like to give your life to Christ, please find us at weareinfluent.org and we have team members who would love to get connected with you. All right, guys, have a great week and see you next week.